Has God Almighty seen you weep lately? When was the last time a tear rolled down your cheek and dropped down to the floor? When was the last time you ever got the surface of your Bible wet from praying and weeping over the Word of God? Say, it's been a long time, preacher. What dried up your fountain of tears? Isn't that something? Isn't that precious? That you can weep, that you can cry, that you can sorrow with others that sorrow, that you can have compassion on them, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ? When one of your numbers lying in the hospital, hurting and suffering, you feel compelled to go and offer them a hand of consolation, get by their side and pray with them. Just let them know that you care, that's all. Just let them know you care about them. And that's what matters. That's how you build relationships. That's how characters form. It's when you show each other you love each other. It's not the hoop and the holler that you got in the building when you're in front of people and the accolades that are handed out and the awards and the rewards and all of that. It's when you go out into the it alone and nobody's watching you and you go out and you help each other. You bear one another's burdens. And when it comes to tears, it comes to these things that men pay, don't, do not pay much attention to, uh, they mean a lot to God. They mean a lot to God if they come from the heart. They originate from the soul. When you call upon the Lord and your prayer ascends to heaven, it ascends into the heart of one who understands it. It ascends into the heart of one who's sympathetic to it. It ascends into the heart of one who has compassion toward you and knows exactly how to carry that prayer into the ear of the Lord. In the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, he makes it plain that we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh groanings or utterances for us according to the will of God. What we have to do when we pray is trust God that our prayer may be stumbling and it may be faltering and we may not have an idea of what we should be praying for, but if our heart's right, it'll get there. And it'll not only get there, it'll get there in the fashion God wants it to be there. The reason for that is because he wants to encourage you to pray. He wants you to keep praying. If Satan can stop you from praying, folks, he's going to stop you dead in your tracks in your Christian life. You've got to keep praying. Prayer is one of the most precious things and one of the most precious gifts that God has given us as Christians. And I believe that a prayer that is bathed in tears reaches into the throne room of God and there he keeps it. Not one single prayer falls to the ground of that one that knows the Lord and loves him and prays in the will of God. So prayers are very, very precious in the sight of God and prayers bathed in tears. He said, would you put my tears in your bottle? Would you remind yourself of how life is on this earth? Would you remind yourself of how we can hurt and how the sorrow and the problems and pain that come our way? But I love him tonight because he loved me. I love him tonight because he's lovable. I love him tonight because he's pure love. I love him because he loved me when I was a sorry, low-down, stinking, dirty dog. Amen. He loved me. And therefore, I serve him tonight. Get the hand of some soul that's weeping and weep with them. Get the hand of some soul that's hurting and just sit there and pray with them. Get the hand of somebody who's going through a hard time. Don't judge them. Don't try to, don't try to, don't try to understand all the reason for everything that's happening to somebody. You will, listen, you'll drive yourself insane trying to do And don't listen to people either. Most people don't know what they're talking about anyway. Uh, you don't know why people are going through what they're going through. Uh, we go through stuff on this earth. Just help this be there. And sometimes you don't have to say a thing. Did you know that Job's friends were his friends until they started talking? Hey Amen. <laughs> Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar were the greatest friends in the world until they opened their mouth. Hey Amen. Until they opened their mouth. For seven days, isn't it seven days? They didn't say a word. They just came from the east and they came and they heard about Job. And they came and they sat down with Job and they just sat there. That was comfort for Job. It would be for me. But then they started talking. Oh boy. Then they started revealing their heart. Then were they a comfort to Job? No, they were condemnation. From that moment on, have you ever lost anybody close to you? Have you ever buried a mother or a father, a son or a daughter, or a husband or a wife? Have you ever buried someone that's very near and dear to you? Tears are shed for loved ones as they leave this world. Does God hear them? Yes, he does. Does God care? Yes, he cares. Can God help you? Yes, he can. Your great high priest, by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, ministers the grace of God to you for every situation and need that we have. And I want grace. Grace, grace, grace. I want mercy and I want grace. I want God to be merciful. I want him to be gracious to me. I don't want justice. I don't know what's to do me. I want God to be merciful and gracious to me. And he does. He ministers grace. 
Grace, grace for every need. Grace for the hour. Hallelujah. Saving grace, dying grace, living grace. All the grace that we need. Make no mistake about it. He hasn't forgotten one prayer. And he hasn't missed one tear that's been shed and prayed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to God. The men sitting right now in bars with beer in front of them that used to preach the word of God. There are deacons out there in the world that have left their wives and run off with some woman that at one time had been faithful servants of the Lord in the church. There are Christians out there that haven't heard the songs of Zion in a long time, in a long time. I don't know what you want to call it, but probably it's one of the greatest curses that you can possibly have is this, you'll never forget it. Once you've been born again, you'll never forget once you know the Lord. I don't care how far you run, how fast you run, how far you think you can get away from God, you won't get away from Him. And I'd like to say to you tonight, if you're listening, come back. <laughs> Come back. Come back. That's your home. You're not at home. Come back home. You'll find the father at the head of the hill looking down the road. And he's ready to kill the fatted calf for you. He goes out every day and he looks for his son to come home. The Father is waiting and the Father's looking. Come home. Are you in this house tonight and you need to come home? Why don't you come home to Him? If you hear this later, if you're watching it over the internet, just get down where you are right now. You don't have to be in a church house. Just get down on your knees and say, Lord, I'm coming home. I'm tired of fighting. I'm giving up. I'm surrendering. I'm coming home and leave it behind you. And you'll hear the songs of Zion again. You'll come back to the land of your, of your fathers. You'll come back where you belong. Father, in thy name we pray. Holy One. <laughs> God, you've spoken to somebody. This is for somebody, Lord. There's somebody that took this in tonight. They needed it. Help them come home, Lord. Help them come home. In Jesus' name we pray. And for Jesus' sake I ask it. Amen.